Welcome to Save Our Sleep. Tizzy and the Save Our Sleep team believe it's every child's right to receive comfort, a parent's right to demonstrate love, and everyone's right to a full night of sleep. This podcast is not a medical or scientific volume, but a collection of tried and tested solutions and tips based on my many years of experience with babies and young children. Its main purpose is to help parents understand and avoid sleep problems in young babies and toddlers. We'd like to recognise the Wadawurrung people who are the traditional owners of this region which Tizzy and myself live and are recording today's podcast on. We acknowledge and respect that they have taken care of this land and water and raised children in this nation for over an extraordinary 70,000 years. The Save Our Sleep podcast is dedicated to helping you prevent and solve sleep problems while having some fun along the way. We endeavour to discuss all things family related, starting from preconception all the way through to an adult child leaving home and beyond. Some topics may be triggering. If you find this is the case, please reach out to your or your child's health nurse or general practitioner. And tonight we're going to talk about getting out and about on a routine because we get asked about it all the time. Right. And Kylie and I like to talk about uh, mental health, mum's mental health. Mental health is so important. It really is. It's one of the hardest parts of being a mum is finding time for you as a mum. And getting out and about in the routine is a really important part of getting of you, of your time. You need fresh air, you need to walk, you need... It's just good. It yeah. is. Yeah, but it, at the moment, when you first, or not at the moment, but when you first have a baby, it's overwhelming. It's really, really overwhelming thinking about all the things you need to do. Do you know what we did once? So, <laughs> I had these children who used to be in my care. It's a bit of a complicated story. And their mother, years later, wanted to meet up with me. And I just wanted to show her. I now realise that the father wanted to write a book. So they wanted to meet up with me because... They wanted to know how I wrote my book. Well, I didn't write my book. So anyone who wants to meet up with me to find out how I wrote a book, I didn't. I was commissioned to write a book. It's different. You get headhunted and you get asked to write a book. It's not like I've written a book and given it to publishing houses. Yeah. It's different. Yep. So I now realise that's they wanted. But I was like trying to impress them and show them how good a carer I was and like make them feel really confident about how good I would have been when their children were in my care. Mm-hmm. And I cocked up. I brought <laughs> Killian out and I forgot his wrap and I forgot his bedding and <laughs> I left everything at home and it was an absolute, total and utter nightmare. <laughs> it is overwhelming. Even when you know what you're doing, it's overwhelming getting out. It is. But I it's think it's so a good, good for idea you. to have a permanent out and about bag wrapped. If you, if you can afford it, I think it's better to have a double, like, have your blankets and stuff for your pram separate to your blankets and stuff for the cot so that you don't lose stuff. You don't forget stuff, you know. Have a wrap for out and about, a wrap for in the cot in the early days. And mm. you can sell them on the second-hand page for nearly the same price as you buy them for. And I remember we went away. He's a bad, whatever. You were probably there. Do you remember I lost one of the babies? Do you remember I was pregnant? And it was, it must have been. Oh, I don't know which pregnancy it was, but I remember I was pregnant and then I lost the baby. Remember we all went for Indian dinner. Yeah, Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah. In uh, Docklands. Yeah. And uh, is it Alan? What were you going to say? Um, her name. Alicia. Alicia. No, yeah. because was I it think her? it was too, my kids were too young, so it can't mm. have been that one. Mm. So I think it must have been one between Dara and Kira, Killian. Okay. I th- yeah, I think it must have been between because th- Kirsten was there yep. with Paul, Kirsty and Paul, Kirsty not Kirsten and Paul, mm-hmm. and Paul and Nathan were in the apartment, and it was like when was Black Saturday? Google when Black Saturday. It was, was. like two thousand and ten. Well, there you go. So I must have been. Mm. No, can you actually Google? Yeah, it? I can it's Google it. Google I'm pretty ago. sure I was so pregnant when because it was Black Saturday and it was like fifty two degrees in Docklands, and it was really hot and. Nathan and Paul were staying in the apartment with Dara and all the women went out with the BFF, Best Friends of Save Our Sleep. I lied. It was 2009. There you go. (laughs) What date? Um, It went from February, the Black Saturday bushfires, uh, 7th of February 2009 to the 14th of March 2009. 
maybe I was pregnant with Killian. So I had Killian in October and I had him probably six weeks early. So if you were October and you were six weeks early, when would his due date have been? October and November. July. So say November. Yeah. Yeah, his due yeah. date would have been November. I didn't yeah. go later, went earlier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. November. And then I always kept three on. So November, December, yeah. January, February. So yeah. I must have just been pregnant with Killian. February, yeah. yeah? So February 2009, I was pr I always know everything about my pregnancy. <laughs> a black Saturday, it was so hot. It was 50-something degrees. And we left Nathan and Paul in the apartment. Yeah. And we went out for dinner. And Dara wouldn't settle, wouldn't settle, wouldn't settle. Screamed and screamed. It's nothing to it being hot. It was air conditioned. Mm. Screamed and screamed and screamed, screamed. And eventually, I had to go. I walked in and he didn't have a sleeping bag on. And he must have been, what, 18, 19? Well, he would have been 14, 15 months. Yeah. Sleeping bag. And you see... We're like sleeping bag and we don't sleeping bag. And that's why I think it's like you, 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 if you are going to go a lot to places, have separate things. Mm. Like if you're going to go to your mother-in-law's and have your child there sleeping there once or twice a week because she's minding your child, get it, more stuff. Yeah, it's if good to invest. If you can afford it, yeah. get it or buy it on the second-hand page or, you know, whatever. It's really good. So getting out and about in the really early days, like, so how do you do it? Well, it's good to have one sleep at home in their bed. Yeah. Okay. It's let's try and block break the week up. You've got, you've got seven days. You've got four. Let's do this. Seven mm -hmm. days, fourteen two hour sleeps. Yep. Let's go with a eight week old baby. Yep. So let's say even earlier than that you want to get out, but let's yeah. just for the sake of it go. You've got seven days. You've got fourteen two hour sleeps. Yep. I would try and have. 10 of those at home. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's aim for 10 of the two hour sleeps at home. Okay. And then what does that leave us? Four, Four. of those two hour sleeps can be out and about. Now that works because yeah. at the weekend you can go out while dad's home or the other partner's home with the baby. And during the week you can go out at that sleep time yeah, or vice versa. Yeah. You know, or you can go out in the afternoon. So I think it's a good idea to get your baby up at seven on the routine, mm -hmm. feed your baby, whatever. Let's just talk about that for one second. If you get your baby up at seven for a sleep from a, for the morning, yep. they've had their last feed at 5.30. Mm -hmm. They're not going to want a really big feed at seven. No. Something which I haven't realized people don't realize to do is top them up closer to the R. So yep. feed, start feeding them at seven and then at 7.40, try them for another 10 mm -hmm. minutes so that they're feeding closer to the end of the R. Yep. yep. Right. Do that. Then. You're going to put them back to bed at 8.15, 8.30, quarter to nine, nine o'clock. If they're eight weeks old, quarter to nine. Yep. yep. You then are going to get at least an hour to two hours, even if you're a good sleeper, two hours, 15 minutes to yourself. Yep. Use that time to, if you need to go back to bed, if you've had no help during the night, go back to bed and have a sleep. Mm -hmm. If you don't need to go back to bed because you've gone to bed early and someone else has done one of the night sections for you so that you can have a good sleep, Use that time for you to have your shower, do your hair, whatever you want to do. Eat some chocolate. Watch. <laughs> but if you are somebody who yeah. needs to wash your hair, dry your hair, and put makeup on. Some self-care time. Some people need to do that to leave the house. Yep. Okay, So you do it there. Yep. Right? And if you don't do it every day, the next day you can sleep yep. when your baby's sleeping. But as soon as you like to have to sleep when your baby's sleeping, your baby wakes up. It's not law. Okay? <laughs> so don't do it. Right? Yeah. Okay. So then you get organized. Then you do the next feed at home. Then after the next feed, for that next sleep, do it out and about in the pram. The more you can do that sleep out and about in the pram, mm -hmm. the more play the child gets used to sleeping out and about and they're easy to move. Yep. Okay. What you can do is, let's say you've had a really crap night and you're really tired and you haven't got organised in the morning and you have gone back to bed maybe, or you just can't get off the sofa or you're just dozing on and off. Or yep whatever, you could put your baby down in bed mm -hmm. for that second sleep at lunchtime. You could then go and have your shower, get dressed and get organised, have the whole pram ready. Yeah, I like a pram with a carry cot, a pram with a proper bassinet top. I call it a carry cot. Mm -hmm. I take my Save Our Sleep bamboo pillow slips mm -hmm. and I put them on the sh on the mattress as a mattress, as a sheet. Yeah, you know, you I love that buy. tip. I only yes. recently learned that one. Look at it on my Instagram. You don't need to buy sheets for your pram. Then have the pram and everything ready. Go upstairs, pick up your swaddled, wrapped, sleeping baby, 
and their blankets, if you're using the same blankets, mm -hmm. carry them to the pram, put them in the pram and start walking. Mm -hmm. It's a good idea to teach them to resettle. How would you do so, it for a car seat? Well, I'm t yes, it's interesting. You would do the same thing. So you would put them down in their cot at home for mm -hmm. their sleep and then you would pick them up, move them into the car seat and you just kind of rock it or move it. Yes, they're going to cry. They may. Yes, yep. they might go, eh, if you do it from day one, they learn. Oh, mum's moving me to the car seat. I've got to continue my sleep. Okay. You know, they, they might cry. They might make a noise. But it's easier to start the sleep in the cot. Yeah. And then moves into the car seat where you're then going to be moving or moves into the pram where you're going to be moving. Mm -hmm. That's easier than to start it in the pram or whatever and then moves into the cot. Okay. Because you're helping them to reset. Settle. It, right. Yeah. And the more you do it, the better they get at it. Okay. Okay. Oh, I think that's why children, third or fourth children with school runs are really good sleepers because they learn to do it. I don't like people doing their full sleeps in those bouncy car seats. Mm -hmm. I call them rocker tots. Their head moves forward. They're not safe. People often leave them unsupervised. If you're walking around a shopping centre watching them, that's one thing. But don't be picking them up in those car seats and carrying them into a friend's house. Plan before you go. Okay, so this is what I would do mm -hmm. for some of the sleeps. I would say, so let's say you're going to go out in the morning. So yep. let's say in this particular sleep, you're going to go out in the morning. Let's say you've got a toddler and a baby and you need to get out. Arrange to go to your friend's house for the 11 o'clock feed. Okay. If you feel comfortable yep. breastfeeding or bottle feeding in front of your friend. Because you've got a toddler, you're not going to go back to bed. Yep. Maybe you can put your toddler in front of some screen time. Screen time is needed. Screen time on an iPad is not a good idea. It's small. It's They can use their fingers and stuff. They're in control. But big screen time. Putting your mm -hmm. child in front of a television, old-fashioned screen time is good. Because you can sit with them and watch it with them. And even if you're not sitting with them, you know what they're watching. You've put a set thing on. They're not using their finger. They're not. It's not that close vision. Yep. It seems to be better and safer. Okay. So even if you set them up on your bed watching telly or you set them up in the TV room watching mm -hmm. telly, this is a second child, while you have a quick shower or whatever to go out with your other child. Then mm -hmm. you've put your baby to bed at their sleep time ahead of setting up the telly. Yep. You've then, you then pick them up. If your friend's house is a 20 minute drive, you pick them up at 20 to 11 let them finish the sleep in the car and drive there. Mm -hmm. If your friend's house is 45 minutes away, you pick them up at quarter at quarter past 10. Yeah. Put them in the car and drive so yeah. that when you get to where you're going, they wake up and you, you feed, feed them. them. Does that yeah. make sense? Yes. Yeah. You Or you could decide to have the sleep there, the afternoon sleep there. If you've got a friend with a toddler or an older child or a baby who's a slightly mm -hmm. different age, see if you can use their cot for the mm -hmm. sleep. See if you can do the sleep in their cot. It's really good. In London, people have nannies. There's much more people with nannies than there is. They call them nursery in London, like daycare is called nursery. Mm -hmm. More people really use, well, I suppose uh, more people use nannies over there than they use nannies in Australia. Yeah. And more, less people use daycares or childcare or nurseries. Now, but the thing is, they've got this whole nanny community and all the nannies hang out together and they have like, they all go to each other's houses and they have playgroups and they have, and it's so different. But the nannies all like, they put on a clean sheet, but they all share the beds. Like they put the babies. You go mm. to a house, there's an older baby. You use that cot for your younger baby that you're looking after when you're a nanny. We should get more mums doing that. Yeah. Like use your friend's cot for your baby to sleep. Yeah. Yes, have your own bedding so it smells of you and maybe put a sheet down, you know, to make sure that your baby isn't going to posit or whatever on yeah, the yeah. airbed. But hmm. try, you know, it's important to get out and about. Yeah. Or even if you know you're going to be there for a long period of time using portacots. Yes. So, of course, you could bring your portacot. Hmm. But I'm trying to say, you know, if it's a way that you can yeah. get away with not using the portacot. Without having to bring, yes. you know, or the whole kitchen sink. Or have a portacot. Yeah. yeah. Or, yeah, but getting out is really, or go to a cafe. Now, a good tip is when your baby falls asleep when you're out and about, if they can see you when they're falling asleep, let them see you when they wake up between sleep cycles so that mm -hmm. they see you and it all looks the same and they go back to sleep. If you face your baby away from you when they fall asleep and they are looking at Peter Alexander pajamas as they fall asleep and then they wake up and you're in a light shop, or that's not a good example, but maybe a, <laughs> a lights are probably a bit bright, but some other shop, yeah. the clothes are going to, the stuff's going to be different. So try and have them facing you because mm -hmm. we know that children who face you sleep better mm -hmm. have you any tips what did you do for out and about i use um snooze shades 
Yeah. Yeah. And so I, that's what I use because I was trying to do it, um, like you said, like if they go to sleep, so they were going to sleep looking at something dark, they woke up with something dark. Yeah. So I mm. use the pram covers. Yeah. And we would use those on prams and their snoo shade is a good brand. It's tested. It's not going to cause airflow problems, but don't use muslins or mm. solid bits. You see all these people with solid fabric that they mm. attach. Don't do that. That's not a good idea. Yeah. It's not something that's been tested specifically and for it can that. Overheat. Yeah. yeah. And you can get prams with, uh, with the carry cots with airflow that you can open them up and and like my Emmalunga opens up and the air can get in. Oh wow. These yeah. Things have changed so no. much since I've had babies. No, they're years old the Emmalungas. Really? They're always older than your children. Oh wow. Yeah. And they open as an air vent. Yeah, lots of prams have air vents. Oh there you go. People just don't even realise. Probably not. You open them up and there's a mesh air vent to let the air in while they're sleeping in it. So and car seats, I would prefer to lift them out of the car seat mm-hmm. and put them in a bassinet. The more you move them when you're out and about, the better. Now, what about school runs? What did you do with school runs? Well, I was lucky. Mine were at kinder. So, and I was fortunate enough that I had my parents live nearby. So I actually got my, um, with Emma, my parents would actually come to the house and watch her until um, it went to like nine thir- like 9.20. And then I would just take her along. We were only three minute walk up the road. So it wasn't too bad for me. But I see lots of parents, you know, even at two, three see, minutes, they fall asleep. minute drive. Mm, it so can be hard. Used to have, so I used to, like, feed. Nathan always helped as well get the kids organised, at least out the door. But I'd feed, and then when we were on solids, I'd feed at home, drive to school, and then I'd do the solids in the car park at school. Yeah. Often late, like the solids, it wouldn't be exactly the right time because trying to fit extra kids in, that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And, and the school library used to be good, but now with COVID, you're not really allowed in the schools. Yeah, it's it hard doing so it, much harder. trying to do it in the car. Must be so much harder with COVID. Oh, yeah, it would be, especially depending on the schools and the rules and things like that. Like we were saying before, we're losing a community. Bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Our village is different, you know, a lot different now, you know, and having to wear masks. Like I wonder how babies feel about that well it affects her speech mm. so it used to be that you know when babies are in the pram and you're walking and i mean it does affect their speech but they will get it eventually it's yeah. no different than a child being multilingual and speaking two languages but it used to be like a daycare with people with masks on and stuff mm. again it sort of outweighs like what's better keeping the germs away or them having better speech sooner speech you know so you with the masks it used to be when you were walking and children were lying in the pram they'd be the children would be watching you and you'd be walking, even if you were talking on your phone or if you were talking to another person while you're walking, the child is watching you and watching how you talk mm-hmm. and watching what you're saying in your mouth movements. But with the masks, when you're out and about, they weren't. So yeah. a lot of children lost the opportunity. Well, what I noticed on the support page was uh, we had a lot of parents when we were sort of coming out of COVID and, you know, kids could, uh, you know, some of our COVID babies, you know, they were, turn- they were now toddlers and they wanted to go to the you know, parents were taking them to the playgrounds for the first time and they'd see other kids and they'd just have this anxiety of like, oh, you know, who's this person because we and we haven't been out and about. So it's so important to start getting out and about again and having that socialisation because some of these kids haven't actually had, had that had opportunity. We had an Irish society thing at our house and one of the children was being a bit funny and then the dad turned around and said to us that we were the only house they'd ever been to because their gra- both sets of grandparents were in Ireland, all their family was away and They'd, because of COVID, they'd met people, they'd gone out and met people, but they'd felt funny about going to people's houses. Mm -hmm. And ours was the first house. We were having a garden party, so they weren't, it wasn't during COVID. All the restrictions were gone. Yeah. But we were having these people to our garden. But then we, I said, I'll just come in the house. You know, the kids were all at the age that they weren't going to wreck the place. And I was, and it was dry, like on a wet. Yeah. It's funny because I'm going to say on a wet day, you wouldn't want them in the house, but then you'd have to be in the house. But, you know, everything was good. It didn't matter. They came in the house and they were saying, it was the first time. The child had been in the house other than their house and the child was acting really funny, like looking around, like thinking, what is this building? Like, this isn't a house. It isn't a shop. What is it? <laughs> We're so, it must be so strange. It would be. I feel for the little ones and I feel for the parents of these yeah. guys. Like, and, you know, even having them in hospital, like, you you know, you have to wait, you know, weeks and some parent, grandparents haven't even met their grandchildren because of border closures. Yes. And- it's tr- yeah. And so... Back to the out and about, someone mm. was asking, like, when do you do your supermarket shop and stuff? Well, I try and do it online, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Because That's what I did in the there's beginning. There's so little for such a small amount of time. 
And I often think that my kids were really good sleepers because not Kieran, who was hiked everywhere, but the younger kids, because we did stay home and we yeah. did follow that rule of a certain amount of sleep at home, a certain amount of sleep yeah. at the back. But, you know, you could do, you can't really do a supermarket shop at the second sleep of the day because mm. you well, can't I actually put did the shopping in. I did mine. So I would get there at three o'clock. So, yeah. and, you know, mine was only 10, 50 minutes away. So we'd wait. You know, I'd wake them up at three, we'd drive there, and then I'd feed the bottle while I was there. And then I'd put them in the, you know, the little trolley yeah. um, seats, you know, obviously cup, put a blanket or something down. And I would just walk around and do that. And they had that 45 minute nap. But with your first, or was this by the time you had a third? Uh, well, eventually, well, with Isabel for the first six months, yeah. I wasn't following Save Our Sleep. But I found, like, especially with Noah, I was very, um, which was my second. I was still very hesitant to leave because yeah. sleep for me was so That's what I'm important. So it's fine to say, but a lot of people wouldn't like. A lot no, of would be but so I worried. I regret that. Like by the time I had Emma, I was a bit more relaxed, and even you know with Noah, like with you know I sort of got started to get out. But in the beginning, I did what you did and said I did the deliveries. But with Emma, I don't know. I felt a lot more confident, and mm. I think with the first two, I really suffered from um, postnatal anxiety. Um, and then finally having the sleep. So I was like, oh, my God, like I don't want to do anything to stuff it up. But my mental health was impacted by it, and I didn't have the same problems when I had Emma as I did with Bella Noah. So, you know, that's why we're saying like it's so important to be out and about. Yeah. So getting back to like the out and about. So, again, if you can follow that rule, like if you're at home for a certain amount of sleeps, it's okay to cock up at sleep. It's okay if you have to go to the supermarket and you have to do a supermarket shop or you need to go meet your aunt or you have to go somewhere. Like it's okay. You get back on track the next day. Absolutely. Like getting out and about will not cock up all the sleeps. No. You can get out and about. You can do the first sleep or the second sleep. Yeah. Even if you're someone who can get up in the morning, can get organised, don't go out for a walk at the pram in the morning, walk to a coffee shop, sit down, meet a friend or have a coffee, let your baby yeah. have their sleep in the pram. Second sleep at home in the cot. Try mm -hmm. and stick with at least Something, one at home. Yeah. Do what I was saying earlier. Ten sleeps, what do we say? Ten sleeps at home, four out and about. Yes, yeah. which is a good number. Now, but then, you know, supermarket shop, like do it in the afternoon if you can. Mm. Uh, but if you can't and you have to do it in the morning, then the baby ends up having a bit of a not such a good sleep because you're out about doing the like a tiny baby will sleep anywhere yeah but your older baby misses a sleep like let's say they did miss their sleep you can always put them down to bed a tiny bit early not every day but not every the, time yeah. once a week or so if they miss a sleep yeah don't be scared to get out and about yeah and i think you know knowing if it doesn't go right like they some babies don't resettle and that's okay too but knowing you know you just follow the next sleep time as you said and just get on with the day and you know if the day is a bit little bit off it's a little bit off but getting out and about is so much more important and as you said like the next day you can just get back up on track you know you and need you to get know out. in your head that you're going to have certain days yeah. where you're going to go out and you're going to have certain days where you're going to be at home and yes it, it's okay for it to get off track yeah it it's not perfect but that's okay life isn't perfect no. and you don't have to stay home for every single day sleep yeah the only thing yeah. i can say for every single sleep would be when we're first starting like if you uh picking up the book for the first time and it, your baby's six months old i would, would suggest home, for yes. you know at least that week staying home I'd and prioritizing weeks, yeah stay stay home for two weeks get the routine happening get the sleeps happening yeah, yeah. a baby who's never settled resettled during the day at home is going to find it very difficult to do so out and about mm. So then it might be a case of if you do have a day where your baby's got no sleep because you've been out so much, mm -hmm. you've got to maybe put them down to bed a little bit early for the next sleep. Yeah. That's okay on the odd occasion. If you find that you put them down early every sleep and then they're waking early every sleep yeah. and the whole thing, yeah. wheels are coming off, you've got to go back to the routine again. That's right. And, it, you know, it's a bit of trial and error, but you figure it out whether it's one of those babies that you can put down a little bit earlier or whether it's I, they had a short, you know, 40-minute sleep because you're out and about and then you still have to put them down at the routine time. You figure it out as you go along, but it's, as we keep emphasising, it's just so important to, to get out, you know. We do find, parents do tell us, that they find it easier to make appointments and so on when they've got the routine. Yes, absolutely. Because they know when the baby's going to be awake, when yep. the baby's going to be asleep, 
you know, rather than they've got no idea what that yeah. day is going to bring them. Yeah. You know? Well, I used to plan like, you know, I believe it was Noah. I would organize to catch up with you and knowing that it was an hour and a half drive. So we would leave at, you know, the start of the sleep. And I knew that by the time I got to you, I could get him out and we we're having a feed and, and things like yeah. that. And then I, you would plan it that the next sleep, you know, we'd we start it. We drive home. And, so Yeah. And uh, again, try and find your people. Mm. Try and get some mums. Try and even if you go to Facebook and ask for local mums with babies the same age, try and get a group of mums where you can. And you don't have to do organised things. Like people often say, oh, but I follow Save Our Sleep and, you know, the sleep's this time and Jim Brew's this time or this is this time or swimming's this time. Well, try and do. Swimming lessons is good to do in the evening at bath time mm -hmm. if you can. Because then you don't have to give them a bath. Do it okay. that sort of after four thirty, five o'clock yep. kind of time. Uh, but you can just get a group of mums together to meet at the pool at a set time. It doesn't have to be official. Yeah. At that age, it's just about getting them used to water. Yeah. You know, and music. Like we used to just, I used to just put post on Facebook saying, "Is there anyone in Bowen Heads who's got a baby of roughly this age who would like to get together once a week for music?" And we used to just do it ourselves. Yeah. You know, and you might be able to find other mums who mm. are following. Is anyone, you could put a post, has anyone got babies who sleep at nine o'clock who'd be interested in getting together for music after the 11 o'clock feed? And yeah. even if you don't say save our sleep, people will know what you mean. Like they'll um, be on other routines or your similar routines or my routine and they'll be like, yes, you know, we'll get together and do it at different houses each That's week. it. Have you found with the routines when out and about that sometimes they need to go to uh, a little bit later on the routine. So if the routine time was, say, 9 o'clock, have you found that they need 9.20? How do you mean? So if well, you're... I, f I have found along the way that they need to, to in order to sleep past that 40-minute cycle, yes, that sometimes they need to go a little yes. bit later yes. because they're just so stimulated by all the things that are around them. Yes. I understand what you're saying. So you're saying if you were going out somewhere like to a shopping centre or mm -hmm. something and you got there at 10 to 9, mm -hmm. rather than wrap them at 9, you're thinking if you wait a few minutes so they're a bit more tired, yeah. they get through the sleep cycle. Yeah, I haven't found that with my, my own children, but I have seen that a lot with other people say that they find if they wait past the normal sleep time, it's easier for them to resettle mm -hmm. when you're out and about. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are your um, thoughts on the baby carriers for so, sleeps? Baby carriers are great for that sleep in the afternoon, that kind of the sleep that we say at 4.30 nap time. They're okay for a two-hour sleep, but it's a long time to be carrying the baby. If you've got a small baby and you put them in a baby carrier and you meet a friend for coffee and they sleep on your chest, it's fine. Again, so long as you're doing it, not every sleep. So mm -hmm. again, if you go with the 4.10 ratio, but if you're going to be walking around a shopping centre and your baby's older, Two hours of carrying a baby, you're going to be exhausted. Yeah, you got to spice it up a little bit and teach them to sleep in different, yeah. um, different places. You know, including the pram and things like that. Because as you said, or they're... you could walk around; they could be asleep. Then you could mm -hmm. go and sit down and have a coffee for four yeah. minutes in the middle, and then walk around again. Yeah, and you might find that would be a time to do your uh, supermarket shop. Yeah, but but then it comes back to. Looking after yourself, like some countries, the first year of a baby's life is your. It's it's like that whole cons confinement. Like the mm -hmm. first year is so important. Some cultures believe it takes a full year for a mother to recover. Now, I was looking at this recently, and some of it's to do with like tr people in Ethiopia mm -hmm. who aren't getting enough food. Then it takes them a long, long time to recover after having a baby. Then you've got people in our society who are eating enough food, are having all their protein, vitamins, everything met. They bounce back within six to ten weeks. But it's amazing how different countries in Australia, you have your six-week check mm -hmm. and it's like your six-week check. Oh, yeah, you're good, your body and everything. You're all yeah. back. Yeah, you can go and do whatever you like now. Mm -hmm. Then other countries, they do that check at six weeks, but that's not when you're good, everything's normal. You wait six months, they go, mm. oh, now everything's good and you can go back. You know, so. It, well, it's interesting even looking at maternity leave that, you know, you're expected, you have your baby, you got, if you're lucky, you got a couple of weeks and you're expected back at work again. Yeah. And other countries, you get a year. Yeah. You know. And again, you're, it's a full time job. You're looking after this human being. It's a full time job. And you've got to be kind to yourself. Yeah. Well, if, like, you know, having a cesarean on top of it or having any 
you know, stitching down there, you know, it's, it's so hard because you're expected to sit there and look after that human and take care of that house and cook and clean as if everything is and normal and your whole body is. And then, so then it goes different. back to, you know, getting out and about mm. if you're tired and so on and walking around again, is that going to affect your milk and so on? So it's, but, but, I think but mentally, yes, is outweighs all mm. of that. Yeah. Because you need it. You need that connection to other people, even if it's going to your mum mum and dad's house or, you know, cousins or whatever, just that connection. And we saw that in COVID, how important connection mm. is to each other, you know. And we're lucky we're in a bit more of a day and age where it's digital, you know, and we can do that. But it's not the same as, you But know. So try and get your people. Try and find people yeah. who follow the same parenting stuff as you. It doesn't have to be save or sleep, but just who have a child who goes down the cot who will be happy for you to come visit them, you know, mm. and as we were saying, one of the main tips is try and start the sleep at home if you're going to drive somewhere. Yeah. And if you're going to go to your parents and it's a 20 minute drive. Yeah. yeah. Start the sleep at home, put them down at home, pick them up, get there for the sleep, do the 11 o'clock feed at your parents' house, then do the uptime at the parents' mm -hmm. house. Then you can either do the afternoon sleep there mm -hmm. and then come home at the 4.30 nap. Mm -hmm. Or you could start the afternoon sleep there, pick them up and come home during that mm. sleep. Just yeah. quickly. The 7 p.m., if we want to stay out past 7 p.m., how do we do that? So if you're doing the dream feed, it's easy because you stay up past 7 p.m. and you come back even if you end up doing the dream feed early mm -hmm. and you do the dream feed and put them into bed. But if you're not doing the dream feed, I would, well, I would have a port -a or somewhere mm -hmm. safe for your baby to sleep at the house that you're at. Yep. Or if you're going to a restaurant, their pram. But it comes down to... The more out and about you do, the younger they are, the easier they're going to settle and resettle. But mm -hmm. again, just talk to them. We're going to go home. I'm going to, we're going to Granny's house. You're going to start your sleep there. I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to put you down at home. You might wake up, mm. but that's okay. Yeah. And then if you do pick them up at Granny's, put them into the car, drive them home, you'd be surprised at how easy they, they do move. Yeah. Pick them up, walk into the house, put them down the cot, stay with them. Mm. Stay with them until they're asleep. Very important. And I think, again, being kind on yourself if it doesn't go to plan, if it doesn't go how you're Just expecting up, it. Yeah. You know, I think one of the hardest things for me was thinking, oh, my God, I've stuffed everything up and now, you know, tomorrow is going to be you a disaster. You have stuffed that couple of hours up. Yeah. But I got to go out. Yes. So, you know, I and think that's important. I think we and need to weigh that up. You, you may have to give them an extra feed or something, but again, you will get back on track. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't. It doesn't. And stop if it's everything. an absolute disaster because you've had to do something for a few nights in a row, or whatever else, as we said, stay home for two weeks and get back mm. on track. Sometimes you just got to do what you've got to do mm. exactly to get now, to sleep. Let's take a listener's question. Sure. Who's it going to be from? Okay, it is from Maya O'Neill, and she says from. Uh, I got into the habit of feeding my baby to sleep as she didn't want to feed when waking up or she would only have a very small feed when waking up. Now I'm paying for it. From two nights ago, we have been letting herself settle for all sleeps. However, my question is, she has been waking up at, from her day sleeps at 45 minutes on the dot and the only way she'll go back to sleep is on the boob. It also takes her 30 to 45 minutes to self-settle for day sleeps. So it sounds like this child really doesn't have the, the settling. settling, you know, and... So it sounds like there's more than one question in that. So let's mm -hmm. start with the, I've gotten the habit of feeding, feeding my sleep. baby to sleep and yeah. then she doesn't want to feed when she wakes up. Yeah. So so why is that happening? Well, so let's start at 7 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe the baby didn't take a good feed at 7 because they fed at 5. Mm -hmm. Then mum's going to put the baby down at 9 and she's like, oh, I think she's still hungry. I'm just going to feed her because she didn't feed well at 7. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then mum feeds her at nine. Then because she's fed to sleep, she's going to wake up at the 45 minute mark. And if she's breastfed, she's going to be feeding her watery milk, not mm -hmm. nice, good, thick, creamy milk. And you're just in this cycle. So mm -hmm. what you need to do is you need to say, OK, today is the day I'm going to get up at 7 a.m. and I'm going to feed my baby today at mm -hmm. 7 a.m. I'm then going to top my baby up, like we said, at mm -hmm. 740. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then put your baby to bed at the normal sleep time. Yep. If your baby wakes at the 45 minute mark or whatever and you have been feeding them, mm -hmm. you cannot leave them in bed and expect them to resettle. Now, we've yeah. obviously checked all the beddings correct. We've checked they're wearing the right clothes. We've checked the bedding. Yeah. We've done all of that, right? 
you then would get them up, keep them wrapped, hold them. You might even use a dummy mm -hmm. to stretch them until 11 o'clock. The first, that's if they're the age yeah, where it's yeah. 11 o'clock. The first time you stretch them is going to be the hardest. Mm -hmm. The first time you stretch them, it's going to be the hardest, but the next cycle is going to be mm. easier. Yeah. Okay. So just remember the first time is going to be the hardest and then it gets easier as the day goes on. Mm. And that's the only time that we recommend, or for me, the only time I recommend using the dummies to, w to stretch, stretch them, them out. Yes. Otherwise, you know, it's not a thing for everyday use. It is only for that first day to stretch out those feeds and get into those habits. And, but... She was asking about uh, the, you know, waking at 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. said, That's a sleep cycle. I'd be looking at how's the baby going to sleep in the first place? Well, she's told us about fed to sleep, sleep in the first place. So then the baby's going to wake up and expect to be fed back to sleep. Mm -hmm. So mum, what, what was her name again? Uh, uh, Maya or Maya. Maya needs yeah. to take a couple of weeks to just stay home and get the routine on mm -hmm. track. Yep. You will manage it, mm -hmm. you know, and it that feeding will sort itself out. You're just on that. You just need to get up one day at seven o'clock and go, today's the day, we're going to change all the feeds, yeah. you know. And if your baby is used to feeding to sleep, then you're going to have to expect them to get themselves to sleep without a feed. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a bit difficult. Yep, same as so, working. But follow the routine first. So that's mm -hmm. what we said in another podcast. You So follow the routine. So feed at seven and then you're not going to feed again till 11. So if they're used to being fed to sleep you could help them to sleep yeah. by patting them or rocking them or whatever at that sleep time yeah. so that you get the feed spread out to the four hours yeah. and only when you've got the feed spread out to the four hours do you then start teaching them to self-settle yeah. and i guess it's important to note again that that for your routines that is only once you've made sure that the bedding's right the clothing's right yes. the temperature's right and we've ruled out everything, everything else, else. Yes, beforehand. Exactly. So a good way for listeners to make sure that they've got everything ruled out before they teach their baby to settle would be to come to the support page yes. and have, you know, other mums or myself or you having a look at what's happening yeah. for them um, before you're teaching any self-settling because exactly. we don't recommend cried out and things like or that. Control, so control crying or anything no. like that. And you have to look at the whole picture first. That's right. Yeah. Your approach is very holistic. So I think that's important for anyone following along to, you know, make sure that they're doing before they... Yes. And the podcast really is for people, we hope, who are in the support group, who are following yeah. along, and it's extras to go with the book. Yes. So we will be back uh, during the week with... Uh, more about well what's our crack during the week we don't know what our crack's going to be no you'll have to stay tuned and get surprised uh, <laughs> so we'll be back for during the week and then we are going to be back next week talking sleep cycles fantastic all right see you later guys bye. bye you have been listening to the save our sleep podcast brought to you by the international baby whisperer proprietary limited you will find more information about the Save Our Sleep philosophy, products, support, and how to watch the mini clips that accompany this podcast at saveoursleep.com. You may find the Save Our Sleep social media accounts by searching Tizzy Hall on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for all my how-to videos and to watch the podcasts. If you enjoyed the podcast, please rate it and share it with your friends. I would like to thank Kylie Zabo for co-hosting, Fundamental Studios Geelong for their amazing recording studio, Nick Dale at Primer Films for this production, and most of all, you, the listeners. Without you, there would be no reason for this podcast. Please enjoy, stay safe, and Kylie and I will look forward to chatting with you again soon.